go with Jesus. When the people of the town saw the man and they saw Jesus, yes. they said that here's what we are going to do. They said, we want you to get out of town. We want you to leave our coast. Well, Jesus applied to their command. Matter of fact, Jesus went down by the sea court and he went down and he caught a boat. And in the boat, he decided that he was going to leave. But what happened was, was that the man that had been clean of these unclean spirits, he wanted to go with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus says, no, you can't go. Now notice what he said in verse number 19. How be it? Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friend. Go home to thy friend. Now let me ask you a question. Here's a man that was had unclean demon spirits that were controlling him. Here was a man that lived in the graveyard, took stone and cut himself. And everybody in town knew this guy was crazy. Nobody had anything to do with him. Yeah, yeah. But when he was healed, Jesus says, go talk to your friends. Now I wonder, Brother Keith, who was his friend? How many friends, brother, what did he have? Jesus said, go talk to your friend. Go home to your friend. But not only that, he said, now go home to your friend and tell them. He said, not only I want you to go home, but I want you to go home and talk to your friend and tell them. Now here come the testimony now. The testimony is, Jesus said, I want you to go tell them go tell. how great a thing the Lord has done for thee and how he has had compassion on you. Now, guess what? Jesus said, I want you to go home, talk to your friend, and, and give them your testimony. Yeah. Tell them what God had done. But then you get to verse number 20. Because when you get to verse 20, the Bible says, and he departed. And he began to publish. You see the word publish? He began to publish. What was he doing? He was testifying. He left and he went and he began to testify. He began to publish in uh, Decapolis. Now, I used to think Decapolis was a city. But Decapolis was not a city. Decapolis was a region. Right. Matter of fact, the word Decapolis yeah. means ten cities. Now, if you go back to Mark, I ain't got time, but if you go back to Mark chapter 4, you can read about these ten cities that was included in this region. Here's what Jesus told a man to do. He left and he went in the, all the at least ten cities of Decapolis, and he began to proclaim or publish just how great thing Jesus had done for him. So what was this this man do? What was the man that had the unclean spirit doing? Let me tell you what he was doing. He was giving his testimony. Tell him. Just how good God had been. You remember the man in John chapter 9, the blind man? Y'all remember him, don't you? Boy, blind Jesus took some spit, some clay, put it in his eye, told him to go wash in the pool of Salaam. He came back and he came back seeing people had a problem. They wanted to know, how did you receive your sight? And he just said, I don't know, there was some guy who came by, put some spit in clay, knowing my eyes, told me to go wash in the pool of Salaam, and I came back. Sin. They had a problem with the man. They said, this is really not him. But it's somebody like him. Then they wanted to 
call this parent sin. Is this your son that was born? Y'all remember what the parents said. He's old enough. You all ask him. But see, when you notice verse number 25, the blind man said, whether this man is a sinner or not, there's one thing I do know. But give me your testimony, blind man. What is it that you know? He said, here's one thing that I know. I know that there was a time that I was blind. Yeah. But now I see. What was his testimony? His testimony about what Jesus done for him. He was telling the people how Jesus had healed him, and now he sees. But let me give you four reasons yes, to share your testimony. Four reasons you ought to be sharing your testimony. Don't be afraid to give your testimony. Don't be ashamed to give your testimony. Tell people what God has done and what God is doing in your life. The first reason is because God's word tells us to share our hope as a believer. You remember in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15, it said, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in uh, you with yeah. meekness and fear. Peter said, when somebody asks about what God has done in your life, you'll be ready to give them an answer. Be ready to give your testimony of just how good God has really been. And if it comes to salvation, you ought to be ready to give that answer of the hope that you have. Yes. Be ready. Give your testimony. And then number two, the second reason why you ought to give your testimony is because it creates transparency within the church. You see, the more honest we are about our mistakes that we have made in the past, the more other people can relate to us. But see, as long as you think, as long as I pretend like I ain't never done nothing wrong, that I've always been the same, that, that I've always been perfect, that I ain't never made a mistake, guess what? If I need you to believe that, you can't relate to me. But if I start telling you about some of the stuff that I've done, some of the mistakes that I made in my life, and how God brought me through, even though I was acting a fool, if I can tell you that, you can relate to me. Why? Because see, you're going through some of the same stuff. You need to give your testimony because it creates transparency within the church. But then there's number three. You need to give your testimony because you become a resource yes. for others. Yes. Now what I mean by a resource for others. See, your story yes. of how God worked in your past helps you to encourage others who may be going through something similar. That's why you need to talk about what you have been through. That's why you need to tell others because see, they may be just where you used to be. And your testimony will be an encouragement to them. So we need to let them know. See, you'll be able to help them carry that badge. Because you have already walked through similar problems uh, that they have. See, your story. Yes. Your story can be a key to unlock someone else's prison. Yeah. Your story just may be the key That's a good word. to unlock somebody else's prison because Jesus, God, uses people as his hand and as his feet. Amen. So you need to tell folks because you know people in all kinds of prisons today. And we need to let folks know because not only physical pri pri prisons, but there are a lot of people in emotional and mental prisons. See, there are some folks that's in the prison 
of doubt. And you may have been there at one time in the prison of doubt, but you was brought out of that prison because Jesus brought you out. And you need to let folk know how Jesus brought you out of the prison of doubt. Maybe you're in the prison of shame. You're just ashamed of what you have done in your life. You're ashamed of your past. You're ashamed of yourself. Ashamed of what you brought upon the church and brought upon your family. You are in the prison of shame. Maybe you used to be that. And you need to tell somebody else what happened to you and how God brought you out. Maybe you're in the prison of unforgiveness. Come on. Maybe right now I'm talking to somebody that has an unforgiving heart. Somebody has done something to you and you just have not brought yourself to forgive them. Guess what? You are in a prison yourself. But if you was there at one time and God brought you out, he helped you to be able to forgive the wrong that somebody had done to you. You need to give your testimony because you just may unlock the door of the prison of somebody else that's in unforgiveness. Maybe pride. Maybe that's, that's your pride. You are bound up and the prisoner of pride. If you have been there and you know somebody else that's there, you need to give your testimony. What about the press for the lovers? Amen. You, you need to give your testimony. Yeah. How God brought you, brought out. you out. You know how you used to be. You, you used out. to lust by everything. Mm -hmm. Every woman come by. Every car. Every big house. You just lust it. But God brought you out of that. You need to give your testimony. Maybe anger. You used to suffer from anger. And you would just have a problem with it. But God brought you out. You need to give bitterness. Amen. Maybe you have been in the prison of bitterness. Yes. And God brought you out. Give your testimony. Give your testimony. What about it's the prison of sadness? Give your testimony. You need to get out. You enter the prison of grief. You need to help tell somebody else how God brought you out. Maybe you've been in the prison of fear. You need to let somebody else know that I used to have a fearful heart. Until I realized that God does not give us a spirit of fear. God brought me out. Maybe you are in the prison of your past. Of your past. You just can't let go of your past. All of us have a past. past. Every last one of us have a past. But you got to learn to let go of your past. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how God brought you out. Now, if you, if God had brought you out of the prison of your past, you need to let somebody else know about your testimony. Because you may be a source, source. of a lot a key to unlock somebody else's prison. Someone has said, every wall that I build to lock the world out uh, is yet another wall that I have built to lock me in. And in the most hideous kind of imprisonment imaginable, I find that I have become both one and human because you have locked yourself in your own prison. Sometimes, church, you can get to the point because you don't want to share what God has done for you. You have literally locked yourself up in a prison. And you have become the warden of your prison. And you have become the inmate of your prison at the same time. So learn to let loose. Learn to let go. Share. You remember? You remember? Mm. Saul and Paul, I mean, he gave his testimony. Yeah. 
But let me give you number four before we close. The reason why you ought to give your testimony because it glorifies, it glorifies God. God. You remember earlier I said that your testimony shows that God is greater than your struggle or your experience. See, it's not really about you. It's all about God and Him working in you. That's what you got to realize about testimony. Don't let the, the word testimony scare you. Don't let the word testimony cause you to be afraid. I don't care what you have heard in the past. I don't care about what you have heard about so and so and them over there give testimony. No, if anybody ought to be given a testimony, it ought to be the children of God. Why? Because he glorifies God. And your testimony is really not about you. It's about him. You remember in Acts 26, Paul gives his testimony before King uh, Agrippa. Yeah. And several times Paul did. Throughout the book of Acts, even in the book of Galatians, Paul would give his testimony. He would literally tell what God had done for him. He would back all the way back and talk about his hometown of Tarsus and bring his life all the way down to when he met Jesus on the Damascus Road in Acts 9. And everybody he ran across, he would give his testimony because he called one of the folks to relate to him. But you remember Psalms in the book of Psalm 71, verses 15 through 18. Amen. Now let me read these to you. And I'm going to read this from the uh, New Living Translation. Verse number 15 says, The psalmist said, I will tell everyone yes, sir. about your righteousness. Yes, sir. All day long I will proclaim your saving power. He said, though I am not skilled with words. Huh. I like what the psalmist says. The psalmist says, I think so much about my testimony. I think so much about what God has done in my life. He said, I'm just going to proclaim it. I'm going to tell it. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to testify it every day as long as I live. And guess what? I ain't got to use no fancy words. Amen. You just tell it just like it is. Mm -hmm. Just say what God have done for you. You ain't got to go to school. You ain't got to have a degree in this. You don't even have to pass English to tell what God done. Just simply say, here's what God did for me. Notice verse 16. Verse 16 says, I will praise your mighty deeds, O sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone yes. that you alone are just. I'm just going to tell you. But then you get to verse 17. He says, oh God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood and I constantly tell others about your wonderful things that you do. Let me ask you, when the last time you simply told others about what God, what God. is doing in your life? When was the last time you gave God the glory? Not about how you work this out. Amen. Not about what you did or what somebody else did. No, no, no. I'm talking about how did God do this? And I know sometimes you want to give other folk credit. Well, you know, if it hadn't been for my wife, or if it hadn't been for my husband, I would, if, 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 if my employer did this, or my employees did this, no, 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 I just want to know what did God do? Because see, God is behind it all anyway. So we have to give our testimony. And then he says at verse number 18, now that I'm old, and great. Come on. Do not abandon me, O oh Lord. Let me proclaim your power to this generation of your mighty miracles and to all that come up after me. This psalmist says, but I guess I can feel with it, Brother Walt. Now that 
I'm old. Ah. Now that I'm gravy. Lord, just, just give me a little more time. Let me. Just a little time so that I can proclaim, that I can preach, I can teach, I can testify to the next generation of just how good you have been to me, of the miracles that I have seen, that you have performed. Lord, just give me a little more time so that I can testify. From the last time you said that. Amen. Lord, give me some more time. Just a Not more time to make more money. Yeah. Not more time to see uh, my great great grandchildren. No, no, no. I don't want to live long enough to see that. He said, I don't want you to just give me more time so that I can have this, this, this huge bank account. No, no, no. Lord, now that I'm old, yeah. and now that my head is great. Ah. Here's what I really want from you, Lord. Just give me a little time. No, don't leave me now. Don't abandon me now. Stay with me, Lord, so that I can proclaim yeah. your power to this next or this new generation. I just want to tell it. I just want to give my testimony. And then you get to Psalms 66, verse number 16. Again, reading from the New Living Translation, it says, Come and listen, all you that fear God, uh -huh. and I will tell you what he did for me. Amen. I just want to give I'll tell you. my testimony. Glory. And I pray this morning that you understand how important it is for you to give your testimony. If you want to keep the faith, and that's what we really talk about, keep the faith alive. Yes. You got to learn. Stay in the Word. Stay. Associate with people of faith and learn to feed on your testimonies. May God bless you. May God bless you well. We'll pick up, Lord's willing, next week with number four and number five. As we continue our study of keeping faith alive. If you are listening this morning and your faith has dwindled, your faith seems like you're losing it, and it's not where it used to be, let me encourage you. Stir it up. Stir it up. Yeah. Don't lose your faith. Yeah. Keep your faith alive, alive even through it. This pandemic. Keep your faith alive. If you need to respond to the faith, remember Paul said, faith coming by hearing. Yes. Yeah. And hearing hear by the word of God. God's word says, hear his word. Believe it with all of your heart. Repent of your sin and confess him to be the Lord and the Savior. Confess him to be the Son of God. If you're willing to do that, we have baptized you. Put him on in baptism. And if you're listening by Facebook or by Catholic, let us know by your comments. We'll make sure that your heart's desire is uh, fulfilled. May God bless you. And if you feel like you need to respond yes. through confession, yes. you can do that as well. Right now, we together sing with Brother Tony. Show me the way.
for that message this morning. At this time, I will transition us into the collection and communion. Before we do that, again, we do apologize. Our video did drop again, but it looked like most of you were able to rejoin. Uh, we were, we are, are connected into the internet, so we're not sure why our internet dropped for the second Sunday in a, in a row. But again, we apologize for that. We thank you for your patience, and we thank you for rejoining with us for the ones that are watching us on Facebook. But at this time, it's a time for us to give. God does love a cheerful giver. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the beginning of verse 6, it says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Verse 7, Every man according to the purpose in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. In verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have always, excuse me, always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Let us pray at this time for the uh, collection, and we ask that you pray with us. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for, again, that uh, the, the time and opportunities we are able to give. We thank you for the ones that do give, but we also mount for the ones that have a desire to give and cannot do at this time. We know this season has brought a lot of economic challenges for many people, and we're mindful of that. But as we just read, that you do supply all of our needs. Not our wants, but you supply our needs. And we just trust and pray that we'll be cheerful in our giving. Whatever we may have, we pray we'll be cheerful in that and be good stewards of what we have. And we trust and pray that this money that's taken up will be will be done to continue to do the work in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray that each one of us say amen. amen. At this time, we're going to move into our communion. We'll take our reading at this time from the book of 1 Corinthians, and we'll get it at verse number 11. We'll get it at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and actually we're going to begin at verse 23 in chapter 11. For I received of the Lord, to which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus same night which betray, betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do, remember to me. After the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you, as often as you drink it, and remember to me. In verse 26, for God to eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But he let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily Eating and drinking damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This time we're going to pray uh, for the communion. Father, we thank you again, uh, as we always say, for the ultimate sacrifice that has ever been known to mankind. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross of Calvary, who died for all of us. And we pray at this time that we remember why we take it upon the first day of the week. We remember why we take it each week. And even though some may can't take it today, but we just pray we prepare our minds in remembering you for the bread that represents your son's body and the cup that represents your son's blood. And we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. That concludes our communion at this time. We do have a few closing announcements that we want to remind you of each week, and then after that, we'll have our closing prayer. We do have one uh, youth spotlight uh, for today we wanted to share. We've not had any youth spotlights in recent weeks, but we do have one today, and it's good news. 
Uh, the first one, it just went to the next slide, but it's for Tay, uh, Taurus McLean. Taurus McLean and Radon, as you know, there are two youth here at Bird Street. They won the football uh, Tennessee State Championship about two weeks ago. So we want to say congratulations to Taurus and Radon uh, for their great work, uh, working with the football team they have been part of this year. We also want to congratulate them, but not only them, but the other uh, teammates that they have had and their coaches again this year. We want to say congratulations to them. We also want to remind you of our weekly Tuesday prayer call, which is at 7 p.m. each week. And this week, we do have another speaker that will be providing the lesson for this week. We ask that you do please call in as the lesson was the topic of the day, keeping the faith alive. And again, that's just another way to stay motivated throughout the week to hear God's word. Not only hear the word, but maybe be encouraged by others that are on the phone. As we listen every week, there's a lot of people have a lot of things going on. And that's not being shared just to share their problems, but, but to ask for prayer. In addition to that, that may encourage someone else. As we look at ourselves, we, we stop and think and say, life ain't all that bad when you listen to other people's problems at times. So we ask that you, if you can, and your schedule allows, to call in, pray with one another, pray for others as you go throughout your week. Again, our sisters' ministry call, they also meet on Tuesday or Thursdays. Again, that's Tuesday at 10, 11 a.m. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Do not forget our weekly night Bible study at 6 p.m. Again, you may join us online on Facebook or you may also join us on the phone conference call. Again, we want to remind you to please stay connected through various ways uh, to hear the messages that have been shared today, not only today, but the previous week. You may find us on our website or on the Bird Street Church of Christ YouTube channel or on the, our Facebook page. So multiple ways that you can stay connected, but also share God's word with others. We do want to say thank you in advance for all the ones that have been faithful in their giving. Again, you may do that by mail. You may also provide it on, in person each Sunday or in the shortcoming week. Uh, you may do it online as well if you feel more comfortable in doing your donation online. That will be coming here soon and you can do it through our church website as well. That is all the announcements that we do have for today. We're going to ask Brother Wall to come and do our closing prayer. Continue to watch over, keeping your case. Is our friend the son praying? 